Okay, animal studies are not always directly translatable into the human body, but this is a really interesting new study that was just published that talks about how just quick little bouts of fasting or fasting mimicking can actually offset a really bad diet. Now, however, the study was done in mice, so full disclaimer, it doesn't mean that you can just go out and eat a bunch of Hostess Twinkies and eat a bunch of Jack in the Box and then do a two day fast and call it square, but there's some interesting evidence that's coming out, so let's break it down. So the quick question that we asked is can fasting or fasting mimicking reverse the effects of a very high calorie, high fat diet? Okay, Walter Longo from USC asked the same question. Now he is a big proponent of what's called fasting mimicking. Now let's get that off the table first. Okay, what is fasting mimicking? Fasting mimicking is where you are eating foods that essentially still allow your body to think it's in somewhat of a fasted state. You're not trying to literally fast, you're eating foods that don't trigger growth signaling, i.e. you're not eating protein, you're not eating carbohydrates, you're basically doing a very, very, very low protein ketogenic diet that is forcing the body to stop IGF signaling or slow it down and slow down all kinds of growth signaling. So basically your body forces is forced to go into like a restorative mode. It makes sense and he's done a lot of research on it. But this study was done in mice and it really brings up some interesting data. Hey, after this video, please check out Thrive Market. They're today's video sponsor. They're an online membership-based grocery store. So if you're doing fasting or even fasting mimicking or you're doing keto, or you're doing any kind of specific kind of dietary pattern, you're gonna wanna check them out. So they're an online grocery store, which means that you log on, you can choose the foods that you like and then they get delivered right to your doorstep. And they have it all in one spot, super organized, super easy, super effective for you to get what you want for whatever kind of diet you're doing, and then it's just at your doorstep. So that link will get you 25% off your initial order, as well as a free gift. But you gotta use that link down below. So check them out after this video. So what they did is they really took three groups. Okay, they took a control group, this control group ate uh, like 10% of their calories from fat, just basically ad libitum, but it was just a control group. Then they took another group of mice, and these mice consumed 60% of their calories from fat, ad libitum in a high calorie fashion. So they said, you mice just eat a bunch. Okay, then another group of mice, they said, you're gonna eat a bunch too in the same fashion, high fat, high calorie, but every four weeks, you're gonna do a five day run of fasting mimicking, where we're gonna put the mice on a specific fasting mimicking diet for five days, and then you're gonna go right back to eating garbage again. So basically, Walter Longo had said, at the end of the study, it's possible for mice to eat a relatively bad diet and then counterbalance it with fasting mimicking occasionally. Let's dive into the specifics a little bit more. The major discovery out of this whole thing, and we'll get into kind of the results in a second, but the major discovery was that intervening a bad diet with fasting mimicking seemed to make the heart of these mice more resilient. So the hearts of these mice were ultimately more resilient and better functioning. But what was really fascinating is when they started looking at gene expression, they were finding that mice that would occasionally do fasting mimicking, like interrupt their bad diet with a quick surge of fasting mimicking, well, they ended up having more gene expression in mitochondrial markers, things that support mitochondrial and metabolic function. So they were effectively kind of reprogramming their fat cells, which could have been what had an effect on their cardiac health. Anyway, let's break it down a little more. So what you've got here is you've got a group of mice that are eating high fat, high calorie, ad libitum. Okay, then you've got another group of mice that's eating the same thing, but occasionally having like a cleanse, if you want to call it that, of fasting mimicking every four weeks. What's interesting, and I mention this only because it's interesting, is that after a few cycles of going through high fat, high calorie to fasting mimicking, the mice were not tolerating going back from fasting mimicking to high calorie. Okay, meaning that when they went through the fasting mimicking protocol, essentially their bodies were feeling so good that when they went back to eating garbage again, they didn't tolerate it well to the point where they actually had to change the study design and have like a two day control after they finished the fasting mimicking. What that means is like, if you ever eat really clean and then have a cheat meal and you feel like garbage, there's something going on because at a grandiose scale in these mice, it was actually making it so they weren't tolerating well and they had to actually change the study design. And again, I mentioned that only because it's interesting. So the results were fascinating. All groups gained weight because they were eating ad libitum, so no surprise there. But the high fat, high calorie plus fasting mimicking group 
didn't gain as much weight. What's interesting is the fasting mimicking group compared to the other you know, high fat, high calorie group, they stayed about the same weight until about 100, cal- uh, 100 days in, excuse me. At about 100 days in, they started to separate. So it's interesting showing that it takes some time for the effects of the fasting mimicking sort of intervention to have an effect in terms of weight. But what's really cool is the visceral adipose tissue levels, okay, the visceral, the, the visceral fat of the mice that did the fasting mimicking were significantly lower. Okay, this is huge because this is metabolically active fat, and this is very important when it comes down to just metabolic health. But what I get most intrigued about is when they do the gene ontology. So they looked at how the genes were reacting. Okay, the mice that did the fasting mimicking ended up having better results in terms of the genes that were associated with metabolic health, like mitochondrial efficiency and mitochondrial health. So they ended up ultimately metabolically better off from a gene expression standpoint. Okay, they also had better biosynthesis of acetyl coenzyme A, which means that they were potentially able to manufacture energy better. Okay, this is where things get fascinating. These sort of things were downregulated in the high fat, high calorie group that did not have the fasting intervention. So what that is showing is when they're eating about the same diet, but just a quick surge of fasting intervention actually ended up making it so their genes were expressing better, improving metabolic health. Now we have to accept that this is in mice. And again, a disclaimer, does not translate into humans, especially on the timeline. But there are some other studies that Walter Longo had published before, okay? The uh, science of translational medicine. There was a study where he took a look at humans specifically, okay? And this was interesting because he had humans do a five day fasting mimicking diet every month for three months, okay? Had some interesting positive results there. He determined that there was a safe reduction in metabolic risk factors in the group that ended up doing the fasting mimicking. In this particular study, there was an average weight loss of about six pounds in the fasting mimicking group, and the overall waist circumference decreased by about one to two inches. That's pretty darn cool. Okay, now, there are a lot of things that didn't change. For example, like C-reactive protein, inflammatory markers didn't really change. So, yeah, you have to ask yourself the question, like, would this be enough time? Perhaps the study needed to be you know, lengthened out a little bit longer. Although this is all super fascinating, one of the things that we really have to pay attention to is that 21 hours of fasting in mice is equal to about a week of fasting in humans, okay? So we absolutely cannot take the exact data, especially in terms of timeline, from a mouse study, a rodent study, into a human model, okay? Because it would simply imply that you're doing the fasting mimicking for over a month, okay, if you were to actually like extrapolate the timeline over to humans. And I don't think that humans should do fasting mimicking diets for a month. The protein is simply too low and it wouldn't be good overall for just tissue repair, things like that. So usually what Walter Longo, like he endorses kind of doing like five day runs of it. Well, a five day run would only be like a 21 hour or 20 hour kind of fasting experiment in mice. So it's not directly translatable. But what we can see here is that by kind of having this fasting mimicking approach, we might be able to influence our metabolic markers and have some counteraction of a relatively bad diet. It does not mean, again, full disclaimer, that you go out and you eat a poor diet, but it does mean that maybe we need to start researching this a little bit more in humans on stronger catalysts to offset a bad diet. So as always, keep it locked in here on my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.